In this video, I'm going to explain what you can and cannot do with your mobile phone when driving in Great Britain, based on rules that came into force in 2022. I'm also going to talk about how the rules have changed over the years. But on the 25th of March, 2022, earlier this year, about nine months ago, the DVSA published this bulletin because the rules changed. And they said, from today, 25th of March, 2022, Rules in the Highway Code are coming into force to make any handheld use of a mobile phone while driving illegal, except in limited circumstances. The changes were supported by 80% of respondents in a public consultation in 2022. So, what does this mean? It means if you're holding and using one of these whilst you're driving, or a tablet, or a sat-nav, or any device that can send or receive data, if you're holding and using it, it doesn't matter what you're using it for, it's illegal. Even if you're just holding it to unlock it, that is also illegal. So why have the rules become so strict? In 2019, a 51-year-old successfully appealed a conviction for using his mobile phone whilst driving. He got away with it because he said he was using his phone to film an accident, not to call people, not to text people. The phone can do a lot more recently than it could do back in 2003 when the rules were originally introduced. Therefore, the rules had not kept up with technology and they needed to be updated. I'm now gonna read the exact words from the government's website that explains this rule. It's illegal to hold and use a phone, sat nav, tablet, or any device that can send or receive data while driving or riding a motorcycle. This next sentence is very important. This means you must not use a device in your hand for any reason, whether online or offline. So you must not use a device in your hand for any reason. More on that one later. For example, you must not text, make calls, take photos or videos or browse the web. The law still applies to you if you're stopped at traffic lights, queuing in traffic, supervising a learner driver, driving a car that turns off the engine when you stop moving, so a stop-start system. Just because your engine is off, it doesn't mean you're parked. And the last one here is holding and using a device that's offline or in flight mode. So that's when you can't use your phone, but when can you? There are some exceptions for when you can use your phone when driving. On the government's website, it says exceptions. You can use a device held in your hand if you need to call 999 or 112 in an emergency and it's unsafe or impractical to stop. So if you're on a motorway and it's unsafe or impractical to stop and you need to call the emergency services, you can via 999 or 112. They're both emergency numbers, they both should work. It also says you can use your phone if you're safely parked. Of course, I would expect that. You can use your phone if you're making a contactless payment in a vehicle that is not moving. For example, at a drive through restaurant. So if you're at a drive through and you want to use your phone to tap to pay, as long as the car's not moving, you can do that. It also says you can use your phone if you're using the device to park your vehicle remotely. That's actually legal. Some of the latest cars come with an app where you can get your car to move into or out of a parking space when you're not in the car. This can be useful if you're in a tight parking space and you can't open the door wide enough because the car is next to you. So you can use your phone to make the car creep out, open the door, and then your life is easier. You can also use hands-free kits. It says on the website, you can use your phone hands-free. You can use devices with hands-free access as long as you do not hold them at any time during usage. So there's a big emphasis here on not holding your phone, not necessarily not touching it. Hands-free access means using, for example, a Bluetooth headset, voice command, a dashboard holder or mat, a windscreen mount, or a built-in sat-nav. The device must not block your view of the road and traffic ahead. It's important to note here that hands-free systems rarely ever mean completely hands-free. It's a, a name given to a certain device. 
the first hands-free systems I remember are the ones you put in your ear and there's a button you have to press. They were popular, I don't know, about 15 plus years ago. This car has a hands-free system and I have to use buttons on the steering wheel or on the dashboard to operate it. I'm not saying you should touch your phone when driving. What I am saying is, I've been through the government websites with a fine tooth comb and I can't see anywhere where it says you cannot touch your phone or your touchscreen on your dashboard when driving. It says you cannot use in your hand or hold and use a mobile phone when driving. Although I can't find anything official that specifically says you cannot touch your phone or a touchscreen for that matter when driving, you can always be charged for careless driving if the police feel your driving falls below the expected standard. And messing about with a touchscreen or a mounted phone can certainly lead to careless driving. If I'm totally upfront with you, occasionally I may touch the touchscreen or the phone if I've got a phone instead of a touchscreen when I'm on the move. But that's not to look into menus and do anything complicated. That is just to accept or decline things. Maybe to accept or decline a call or accept or decline a route update. Sometimes a sat nav finds a quicker route and maybe I do or do not want to take that. But I don't allow it to distract me from driving. Whether or not it's careless driving, well, that's an opinion. That comes down to the police and eventually the courts. Was my driving below the standard? Well, if I'm driving along straight line and I feel it's safe for me to quickly press something like that, in my opinion, that's fine. That's why I do it. But of course, you must be very careful and my advice is leave these things alone. And it does say on the government's website, staying in full control of your vehicle. You must stay in full control of your vehicle at all times. The police can stop you if they think you're not in control because you're distracted and you can be prosecuted. I'm now going to talk about the penalties before I go into what I do when I'm driving and talk about how the rules have changed over the years. So under penalties on the government website, it says you can get six penalty points and a £200 fine if you hold and use a phone, sat nav, tablet or any device that can send and receive data while driving or riding a motorcycle. It says, you'll also lose your license if you've passed your driving test in the last two years. And that's because when you pass your driving test, you're on a two year probation where you're only allowed a maximum of six points before you lose your license. And here you can get six points for one offense. Therefore, you can lose your license for being caught for using your phone once. Once you've been driving for more than two years, you're allowed up to 12 points. Is that fair? Interesting debate though, isn't it? Seems to be the less experienced you are, the more rules you have to follow. I don't know if that's right or wrong really, because you think about it, if you're more experienced, you don't necessarily need as many rules to keep you safe. You can have a bit more free will maybe, but then you could just say it's unfair. Good topic for debate. Not going to get into it now. You can get free penalty points if you do not have a full view of the road and traffic ahead or proper control of the vehicle. You can also be taken to court where you can be banned from driving or riding, get a maximum fine of a thousand pounds or two and a half thousand pounds if you're driving a lorry or a bus. I use something called Android Auto. Apple also have their own one known as Apple CarPlay. Essentially, you plug your phone in, mine's in the glove box, and it then uses your phone's maps and media on your car's screen. This car didn't come with this device. This car is a 2014 model. It had a much older system, but they made the model up until 2020. So I've taken this system from a 2020 car and fit it in here to make it work. I've got this button on the touch screen here that I can press, and then I can use voice commands, or on this car, I don't even need to touch that touch screen. I can actually just hold this button down here and direct me to Cambridge Road, Colchester. See if it works. Navigating to Cambridge Road. It usually does. It's fairly successful. And there you go, straight away, very little interaction needed. However, you should set your sat nav and anything else you need before you get going so you're not distracted. If you're distracted when driving, you're still liable for prosecution. 
But what if your car doesn't have the latest kit? This Citroen C4 is 2011 and it has a very basic Bluetooth system that's been fitted to cars for a long time now. And phones these days are big. You don't really want them in the window because they do obscure your view. What I use are these magnets. I'll leave a link to one in the description. They come with a piece of metal that you can put on the back of your phone. I found it annoying on the back of my phone, so I put it on a case. This case cost me about four pounds, I think. And then all I do is when I get in this car, it's my other half's car, so I put my phone in the case, doesn't take long, pop it on there, on the magnet, hasn't ever fallen off, and this one's quite a big, heavy phone, and plug the lead in. When I turn the engine on, it will automatically connect to Bluetooth so I can play what's on my phone through the stereo. Also, it plays the satellite navigation instructions as well. The problem with this system though, is it's not as easy to use because you haven't got a steering wheel button or a dedicated driving app. You have to really set this up before you go and leave it. There's not a lot you can do. Occasionally it might say, oh, we found a quicker route, accept or decline. I can press accept or decline. Voice activation still works. Direct me to Cambridge Road, Colchester. Didn't work as well, but there we go. I have to press another button here and another button. So yeah, definitely set this up before you go. It's more fiddly, the icons are smaller. It's definitely more distracting using this system. But for the price, it's a good alternative to having the phone in your windscreen. And it's a cheap sat nav, basically free. When I'm finished, unplug it, take the phone out of its case. Obviously, if you have the metal bit on the back of your phone, it doesn't bother you, you don't even need to do that. And I pop the phone or the case in the glove box ready for next time. If you're wondering where the power comes from, well, most cars have a 12 volt socket, the old cigarette lighter, and I buy one of these uh, 12 volt adapters. I'll leave a link to one in the description and it has two USB ports in it, which is handy if a passenger wants to charge their phone. Plug it in the 12 volt socket and then you have power so that your phone doesn't run out of battery. It wasn't actually that long ago that you could use your mobile phone whilst driving. In fact, when I was growing up, it was normal. The ban didn't come into effect until the 1st of December 2003. So if I learned to drive just a year earlier, I learned in 2004, it would have been legal for me to drive whilst using my mobile phone. But you can always get prosecuted for driving dangerously or carelessly, which of course a mobile phone could lead to that. When they bought in the ban on the 1st of December 2003, there wasn't even a fixed penalty. That didn't come until 2007, when it was 60 pounds, 60 pound fine, and three points on your license. In 2013, that fine went up to 100 pounds, but it was still three points on your license. And in 2017, the fine and the points doubled to a 200 pound fine and six points on your license. That fine is still the same, that fixed penalty, but the rule changed, and the rule changed for the first time on the 25th of March, 2022. That's the first time since the rule was introduced on the 1st of December, 2003. I think most people would agree that using your mobile phone whilst driving is dangerous. The ban is here for a good reason, to try and make the roads safer. It tries to lower the chances of you hitting somebody else, but also of somebody else hitting you. I think car manufacturers are actually setting a bad example here because they're putting more and more features into the touchscreen and basic features at that, like demisting your front window. You need to do that when you're on the move. You need an easy button that you can press. I don't think Euro NCAP should be awarding cars a five-star safety rating if they have basic functions in a touchscreen like your heated front window but also your climate control and your heated seats things that people want to adjust when they're on the move easily because who wants to be cold or hot hopefully they don't start putting things like the windscreen wipers in there because they want to save on the cost of the stick for turning it on and off the stalk next to the steering wheel the reason why they're doing it is not to be flash Really, I think, in my opinion, the reason why they're putting more things into the touchscreen is because it's cheaper. Writing a little bit of software is a lot cheaper than manufacturing a whole stalk or panel with some buttons on it. 
Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, then Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy, which means you can learn to drive in somebody else's car without them being stressed about their insurance policy. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you're insuring your own car, check out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form, get loads of quotes back from many insurers to compare who's cheapest, and you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like to see how much it costs to insure different cars. A useful tool if you're shopping around for cars and want to know how much it costs to insure them. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel. So thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.